With FSR rapidly gaining adoption by the developer community, we will have to evaluate GPUs in a different light going forward. If FSR continues to gain favor versus DLSS, then a GPU that supports it and that's targeting 1440p gaming suddenly becomes a valid option for 4K, and I suspect that that will be the case for AMD's soon-to-be-launched 6600 XT. Let's go over some FSR tests with an equivalent GPU and also go into some exclusive information regarding AMD's upcoming mid-range cards. This video is sponsored by ucdkeys.com. If you are looking to put together a new PC, you'll probably need a Windows 10 Pro key, and UCD Keys is currently selling them for less than $15. I've tested this service myself, and their keys work perfectly, even on Windows 11. You can also get Office 2019 keys, and they work globally. Use the coupon code C20 for an additional 20% off. Check out the links in the video description. If you remember back in January at CS, AMD hinted it would be launching the 6600 cards in the first half of 2021. Well, we're now into the second half and there are no 6600s in sight, at least as far as discrete desktop GPUs are concerned. So when will the 6600 XT launch? I asked around and the 6600 XT will be available in August, while the 6600 non XT has no release date yet, so reviews for launch day should be out before then, but you'll be able to buy the 6600 XT in August, if there's stock, of course. As far as performance is concerned, right now the drivers that are available for partners are locked, so there's no way of knowing for sure. I would imagine it's around the 5700 XT or 1080 Ti levels of performance, plus or minus 5%. I do know that the last level cache will have 32 megs, something that videocards.com has already reported on. I haven't been following the rumor mill much, so if any info in this video has already been revealed elsewhere and I don't credit someone, it's because I just haven't really paid much attention to it. I'll add credits to the video description if that turns out to be the case. I also know that the 6600 XT won't be available on AMD.com, so there will be AIB models only. The reference design that has been leaked is for promotional materials only. The 6600 XT is going to have a 8 gigabytes of VRAM, something that has already been reported on. Now there's no word on pricing yet, but if I were to guess, I'd say the 6600 XT will have an MSRP of $399, so $400. That's speculation on my part, but I think that sounds about right. Pricing doesn't get decided up until just before launch, so even if I did have confirmation on pricing, it would be subject to change. So on the surface, it doesn't sound like a particularly exciting GPU, just par for the course. Perhaps a decent replacement for the 5700 XT given the extra features. However, like I said in the video introduction, AMD's upscaling technology, FSR, forces us to evaluate the 6600 XT in a new light. I dusted off the 5700 XT, which I suspect will perform around the same ballpark as the 6600 XT, and did some testing with FSR to get an idea of what we can expect. In Godfall, at native 4K with max quality settings, the 5700 XT was averaging 37 FPS, but with FSR turned on at ultra quality, the average FPS jumped to 56.3, so pretty close to 60 frames per second on average on a 4K panel in what is a fairly demanding game. Ray tracing was off, of course, as the 5700 XT doesn't support it. There are several good detailed comparisons out there of FSR already. I'll give you a more subjective opinion on it. To my eyes, the 4K native image on the C9 OLED looks better, a lot more detail, which is to be expected, but the performance gains with FSR make the slightly blurrier textures an acceptable compromise. DLSS 2 does look better than FSR, but it's also much harder to implement, as I've discussed in past videos. By the way, on the 16th of this month, a few more FSR games will be added to the supported list, and there's even one game that 
that will have both the LSS and FSR support, so stay tuned for comparisons on that next week. But in Quadfall, I can confidently say that FSR makes the 5700 XT a 4K capable GPU, which is certainly impressive. The 6600 XT will be even more impressive as it will support HDMI 2.1, meaning you can use a C9 or C10 OLED at 4K 120Hz for a buttery smooth experience. All that with a $400 GPU. This is why the 6600 XT actually matters. I also played through Terminator Resistance, which by the way is a really good game. I beat it when it came out and it's definitely a hidden gem. To my eyes, there's virtually no difference between playing this game with FSR on or at native 4K, but even the 5700 XT had no trouble running this at 60 FPS at 4K max settings, so I really don't see this as a good use case for the tech. I should say that this Terminator game was made to be played on an OLED. The contrast of the fire and particle effects with the dark environments looks really cool. In the Rift Breaker, which I also tested with FSR on, I can more easily tell the difference between FSR on and native 4K, but honestly this is a game I really don't like and that looks pretty crappy to me. Feels like more of a tech demo than anything else, kind of like Ashes of the Singularity. Nevertheless, with FSR turned on, the visuals still look good, far better than a regular internally upscaled image. It's hard to describe the effect that FSR has on the image. It feels like the more detailed the texture work is, the worse the FSR picture looks. So the image quality will be really dependent on the game. It's not the sort of thing that just applies equally to all games. If I had to guess, I think that in future implementations of FSR, AMD will be adding content-aware sharpening just to the textures in order to try and recover some lost detail. There's also the possibility that AMD will add some machine learning based techniques just to improve the textures when FSR is turned on. Who knows? So assuming this information on the 6600 XT is correct, then at $400, if you can find one, I think this will be a very compelling product. Just like the 3060 Ti is a compelling product for games that support TLSS, especially if you combine these GPUs with a 4K 120Hz OLED panel, which in my opinion continues to be the best investment you can make to improve your gaming experience. The difference now is that you don't need a high-end $700 plus GPU to take full advantage of an OLED. With FSR and HDMI 2.1 support, mid-range GPUs will now make a great pairing with such a panel. We need more demanding games with FSR support to get a more solid evaluation of this thesis, especially when it comes to detailed textures. But like I said, stay tuned as next week the games list will be expanding. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. Consider supporting me on Patreon today and you'll get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server. If you can't contribute financially at this time, then please give this video a like and share it with friends as that really helps. Thanks for watching and until the next one.